Hello, my name is Jesse Colin Jackson, and I'm an artist and an art professor at the University of California, Irvine. We're here today to look at and talk about Marching Cubes, my most recent exhibition. Um, Marching Cubes is an interactive installation of 3D printed units. Um, the units are derived from a historic graphic algorithm called Marching Cubes. Marching Cubes was inspired by a few different things. Uh, the first thing was a desire to take things that are made for the virtual world. So Marching Cubes is a procedure that was originally designed um, to take medical scan data and turn it into a surface for a computer. So it entirely lives in the computer. We're trying to take something that lives in the computer and make it real, make it physical. Um, that's inspiration number one, and I've been working on variations of this project for a long time. In an earlier version of it, it was at a larger scale, but there were less pieces. Um, this time, I'm inspired by the fact that at this scale, where the pieces fit in the hand, um, it becomes a toy, it becomes playful. And visitors to the exhibition are invited to play with the objects and build, but either build things that we are building together, or build things that they want to build themselves. Another source of inspiration is I work with a group of students in my lab. Um, my lab is called the Speculative Prototyping Lab, and it's speculative in the sense that we're interested in new types of making. Um, and certainly 3D printing is, is one of those types of making. And we're specifically interested in uh, making things with the kinds of 3D printers that you know, normal people buy, consumer machines. And so we have a group of, of Airwolf Axioms uh, and that we've been using to build the installation. And we're also testing different, we're trying to push the limits of these devices. Um, but when it came time to fabricate, now we've made uh, 1,600 pieces um, and the total amount of uh, filament is 300 kilograms. Um, that's not something that's done very often uh, with 3D printers to make something at this scale. Um, but one of the reasons we chose to do it was, well, one, it's, it's, it's of interest to us because we're interested in 3D printing, but two, it allowed for objects that had an internal structure. Um, that's something that injection molding wouldn't normally allow easily. It, it allowed them to be very light um, because the, the, they're, they're very thin. Um, it allowed us to use some beautiful materials like PLA that have a kind of translucent C so that you can see the colored piece. The, the units are made of both colored and natural PLA. Um, and we wanted to be able to show the colors through the translucent material. The students and I have been working with Airwolf 3D for uh, an almost, a number of years now. Um, they're our, our local partner in 3D printing. Um, we're here in Irvine, Costa Mesa is next door. And a year ago, uh, Airwolf supplied uh, one of our first axioms for use in what was called the Tool Room of the Future, which was uh, part of the U.S. Department of Energy Solar Decathlon competition. So we built a room in that house that showed what making in the future would look like for consumers. I mean, everyone will have a 3D printing room and they'll have a printer and they'll be able to make things for it. So that's how we got to know Airwolf and, and started working with the Axiom. Um, we continue to work with it because it's got a large build volume that allows us to build as many plates, uh, many plates at a time. Um, it's, uh, it's a beautiful printer and that's why we have it on display here in the show. Um, we, we, we did look at other printers and, and, and certainly you know, there were lots of options that were of interest, but uh, it's, it, it's been great for us in the lab because it is so large, um, but it's not kind of in that, there's a whole other grade of printer that's much more expensive um, and much less user friendly and not based on the kind of open source software that we are used to using. I'm interested in the future of 3D printing as a way of teaching students how to deal with geometry. I think that a lot of the technologies that students are now used to are two-dimensional, um, but increasingly a lot of those two-dimensional products like, and we think of virtual reality and the kinds of games the students play, are, are actually three-dimensional, and we need to teach students how to have a kind of literacy with dimensionality. We've been able to make very fancy objects out of plastic for a long time. That's not new, but being taking that ability and putting it in the hands of regular people um, is, is super interesting um, and it's definitely part of the future.